Herzlich willkommen zu Coffee Break German. Welcome back to the Coffee Break German Show. Ich bin Marc. Ich heiße Thomas und Marc, geht's dir gut? Ja, geht's mir sehr gut, danke. Das freut mich. Und dir? Auch, danke, danke. <lacht> good, good. In these weekly episodes, we talk about different German topics and help you to improve your German one sip at a time. Now you can subscribe to the podcast if you're listening to the podcast or if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, then make sure you subscribe there and of course hit that little bell icon that appears to be notified whenever we release a new video. Also, was lernen wir heute, Thomas? Uh, we're learning everything about you. Everything about you. Sounds good. Also, los geht's. <laughs> Now, Thomas, you said that in this episode, we're going to be finding out all about you. I mean, I take it you're meaning the word you as opposed to finding out about me. Yes, well, that was the focus of the lesson. We can make a mix of it if you want. No, 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 it's fine. It's <laughs> fine. People don't need to know about me. Let's find out about the word you. Yes. Do you know how many different ways there are in German to say you? Mm, well, I think there must be three because there's the du form, then there's the plural ihr form, yeah. and then sie. Yes, but have you thought about all the cases that are in German? Oh, so for yeah. example, ich helfe dir. Yeah, okay. In that case, we've got du, dir, and then dich. Yeah, sehr gut. Okay. Um, so then we would have uh, ihr, and then ich helfe euch. Genau. And uh, so euch is the dative, and the accusative would be euch too. Yes, it's the same word for both of them. So we have five different words already. Uh -huh. and, and then, then with Z, um, we've got Z. Then the accusative would be Z. Genau. And the dative would be Ihnen. Yeah, genau. Wie geht es Ihnen, Wie for geht example? Ihnen, of course, yeah. So, so seven in total. Yes, seven different words for one word in English. Wow. Today, though, we're going to be focusing in particular on the formal forms. So yes. sie, sie and ihnen. Maybe we should look at that in some context. Genau. So what I wanted to first look at is sie as a subject of a sentence. Mm -hmm. So in the nominative, for example, very important in sentences like möchten sie etwas trinken. Yeah. So would you like to have a, to have something to drink? Genau. Oder auch um, sie sprechen sehr gut Deutsch. Oh, danke. Gerne. Das stimmt. So, Sie sprechen sehr gut Deutsch. You speak very good German. But here, of course, we're talking about you formal form. Genau. And we talk a little bit more about later when we actually use the formal form. Important here maybe is because people can't see it written down. It always has a capital S. Yeah, that so is So if it's not important. at the start of the sentence, you can uh, distinguish it from she mm -hmm. by the capital and also which verb form you use. So we say like möchten Sie instead mm -hmm. of möchtest du oder sie möchte. Yeah, or sie spricht sehr gut Deutsch would be she speaks very good German. Genau, perfect. Okay, so that's sie as a subject. What about when it's the object? If we look at sie as an object, mm -hmm. um, maybe in the accusative case first, um, for example, um, ich kann sie sehr gut verstehen. So verstehen takes the accusative. Uh, yeah, so I can understand you very well. Genau. Or another question you might ask somebody in German is, darf ich Sie etwas fragen? Darf ich Sie etwas fragen? Could I ask you something? Genau. So, darf ich Sie etwas fragen? So, das Fragen then always take the accusative. Yes. So, the right. ich is the subject here, mm -hmm. darf ich, and then Sie is our object, and because yep. of fragen, it's in the accusative. Okay. So, Sie in the nominative yeah. for the subject, Sie in the accusative for a an object in the accusative, but we've also got Z or the form of Z when it's an object in the dative, and that's when it changes. Genau, and the most likely sentence you will have heard that is, wie geht es Ihnen? Yeah, so Ihnen, again with a capital I. Genau. Okay, so wie geht es Ihnen? How are you? Literally, how does it go to you? Genau, or another sentence you might want to ask is, kann ich Ihnen helfen? Yeah, again, something we've seen many times in Coffee Break German, kann ich Ihnen helfen? Can I help you? And is that then because helfen takes the dative as well? Yes, it's one of those verbs that always takes the dative. Good to know, good to know. So, kann ich Ihnen helfen? Can I help you? And were we to be talking in the, the du form here, we would be saying, kann ich dir helfen? Genau. 
Okay, so dir being the data form for du and ihnen being the data form for z, again with that capital letter. And I think it's really useful or sometimes it's hard for people if they are in Germany and they are dressed not with the du form that they mm -hmm. use or learn most of the time that they know somebody's talking to them even if they see ihnen or a c yeah. and that they like, oh, you're talking me. to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got z, z and ihnen and all three are capitalized. And you said earlier, we were going to talk a little bit when you actually sort of use this Z form. When, when, what qualifies as a formal conversation in order to use the Z form? It depends a little bit on region where you are. Generally, I would say if you don't know people that well, yeah. also if it's in a work environment or if it's um, in a formal setting, for example, with the police or somebody with mm -hmm. authority, you would address them with C. Mm -hmm. Again, Austria normally uses to do way more than okay. Germany, for example. And again, the south of Germany is a little bit more lax, I would say, oh, okay. um, than the north. And so if you go into a shop, for example, and you're asking, you know, can, can you help me? Can Sie mir helfen in most places? Would that yes. make sense? Yes. Uh, and that's actually a good point. Uh, age also matters uh -huh, here. Okay. So if somebody is um, considered to be older, uh -huh. then you would use the formal C or the Ihnen. Um, I think it's the first time I felt really old when I went to like a, an ice cream shop and somebody addressed me with C and I was only 24. I was like, wow, okay, that's, that's what it feels I've like arrived. to be old. <laughs> so if I went into a shop, I'm not 24, as you probably know, if I went into a shop and it was a younger person, see a 24 year old shop assistant, would it not be rude for me to address them as do? Um, I think that uh, depends where you are. I, if you, I would say if you want to make them feel old, uh -huh. <laughs> you would use uh, the formal version. Ah, right. But I feel it's a the ice cream shop also is a little bit less formal setting. You go in and say like, ah, can ich, kannst du mir bitte ein Eis geben? Or right. kann so, ich dich was fragen? So it could almost be a compliment if you address someone <laughs> as do because you think they're younger. Is that the kind of idea? Yeah, it can be. I think generally, if we sum it up, it like depends on the region where you are, mm -hmm. on age, and yeah. then also on the situation or the setting. Okay. If you use formal or informal. Okay. Now, we've been talking in our other podcasts, we have coffee break French and Italian and Spanish and so on, about this point where you start to use the informal form with someone, say, in a work scenario. And in those languages, there's a word for it to use the tu form in French, you would say tutoyer, or tutear in, in Spanish, or dare del tu in Italian. Do you have a, an equivalent in, in German? The, the Italian one, I don't speak Italian very well, but that sounds really similar because uh -huh. in German you would say, does du anbieten, so to offer somebody uh -huh. the you. Right. So in Italian, you give, uh, well, kind of give the, the you form. Yeah. So you, you offer someone. So exactly. what, what's the expression? Anbieten. Das du anbieten. Das du anbieten. So how, how would that work in a sentence? So for example, if you come home and you say like, mein Chef hat mir das du angeboten, if it's in the past, or if you, in, if you put a sentence in the present tense, you say, um, ich biete dir das du an, uh, wir sind gute Freunde. Right. Ich biete dir das du an. Genau. Anbieten so, is one of those separable ones. Yeah. I'm offering you the du. Um, wir sind Freunde. We're friends. Ja. Um, so in that situation, do you already use the du form? You wouldn't say, ich biete ihnen das du. I know. It's, it's kind of the first step you're offering and you're... You're doing it as well. Also like already like using the du for him. Yeah. So do you have a, do you also have a, a, a verb for it or is it always das du anbieten? Um, if you offer somebody, if you suggest it, then yes, but there's a verb duzen. Ah, okay. If you say like, oh, wir duzen uns. And you can actually even say um, that as an offer because like, wir können uns duzen. So yeah. we can say du to yeah. each other. Uh -huh. And if you said about two other people that they use the Z form, what would you say? Siezen. Siezen. Okay. Yeah. So sie siezen sich. Genau. Or if you say like, oh, hier in der Arbeit siezen sich alle. Like everybody, everybody here at work is the using the, the, the formal version. Good. The C. So in this episode, we've talked about Z. We've talked about Z as a subject in the nominative, as an object in the accusative, also as an indirect object in a sense in the dative form yeah, no. as Ihnen. We've touched on Du and Ia, the informal forms in the singular and plural. But I think 
probably will do a separate episode on that. I think there's enough to yeah to cover a full <laughs> fill up a full episode. Okay. Well, I think we'll leave it there for now. I hope you really enjoyed this lesson and there's lots more examples and more information about the see or do or ear in our blog post and you'll find the link in the description below. Now, if you'd like more help with your German, we offer regular free email lessons and you can simply go to coffeebreaklanguages.com slash German and sign up for them and you'll receive lessons about grammar, about vocabulary, about idiomatic expressions, culture, all of these in your inbox very soon. So, Mark, was das? Ja, das war's. Duzen wir uns oder siezen wir uns? Uh, wir duzen uns. Sehr gut, okay. <lacht> Bis zum nächsten Mal. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss. Happy Coffee Breaking. You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radio Lingua Network. Copyright 2023, Radio Lingua Limited. Recording copyright 2023, Radio Lingua Limited. All rights reserved.